Chapter 16 of Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Vendetti. Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics by George Washington Plunkett. Chapter 16. Plunkett's Fondest Dream. The time is coming, and though I'm no youngster, I may see it when New York City will break away from the state and become a state itself. It's got to come. The feeling between this city and the hayseeds that make a living by plundering it is every bit as bitter as the feeling between the North and South before the war. And let me tell you, if there ain't a peaceful separation before long, we may have the horrors of civil war right here in New York State. Why, I know a lot of men in my district who would like nothing better today than go out gunning for hayseeds. New York City has got a bigger population than most of the states in the Union. It's got more wealth than any dozen of them, yet the people here, as I explained before, are nothing but slaves of the Albany gang. We have stood the slavery a long, long time, but the uprising is near at hand. It will be a fight for liberty, just like the American Revolution. We'll get liberty peacefully if we can. By a cruel war, we must. Just think of how lovely things would be here. If we had a Tammany governor and legislator meeting, say, in the neighborhood of 59th Street, and a Tammany mayor and board of aldermen doing business in City Hall, how sweet and peaceful everything would go on. The people wouldn't have to bother about nothing. Tammany would take care of everything for them in its nice, quiet way. You wouldn't hear of any conflicts between the state and city authorities. They would settle everything pleasant and comfortable at Tammany Hall, and every bill introduced in the legislature by Tammany would be sure to go through. The Republicans wouldn't count. Imagine how the city would be built up in a short time. At present, we can't make a public improvement of any consequence without going to Albany for permission, and most of the time we get turned down when we go there. But with a Tammany governor and legislature up at 59th Street, how public works would hum here. The mayor and aldermen could decide on an improvement, telephone the capital, have a bill put through in a jiffy, and there you are. We could have a state constitution, too, which would extend the debt limits so that we could issue a whole lot more bonds. As things are now, all the money spent for docks, for instance, is charged against the city in calculating the debt limit, although the dock department provides immense revenues. It's the same with some other departments. This humbug would be dropped if Tammany ruled at the Capitol and the City Hall, and the city would have money to burn. Another thing, the Constitution of the new state wouldn't have a word about civil service, and if any man dared to introduce any kind of a civil service bill in the legislature, he would be fired out the window. Then we would have government of the people by the people who were elected to govern them. That's the kind of government Lincoln meant. Oh, what a glorious future for the city. Whenever I think of it, I feel like going out and celebrating, and I'm really almost sorry that I don't drink. You may ask what would become of the upstate people if New York City left them in the lurch and went into the state business on its own account. Well, we wouldn't be under no obligation to provide for them. Still, I would be in favor of helping them along for a while until they could learn to work and earn an honest living, just like the United States government looks after the Indians. These hayseeds have been so used to living off of New York City that they would be helpless after we left them. It wouldn't do to let them starve. We might make some sort of appropriation for them in a few years, but it would be with a distinct understanding that they must get busy right away and learn to support themselves. If after, say, five years, they weren't self-supporting, we could withdraw the appropriation and let them shift for themselves. The plan might succeed and it might not. We'd be doing our duty anyhow. Some persons might say, but how about if the hayseed politicians moved down here and went in to get control of the government of the new state. We could provide against that easy by passing a law that these politicians couldn't come below the Bronx without a sort of passport limited the time 
of their stay here and forbidden them to monkey with politics here. I don't know just what kind of a bill would be required to fix this, but with the Tammany Constitution, governor, legislature, and mayor, there would be no trouble in settling a little matter of that sort. Say, I don't wish I was a poet, for if I was, I guess I'd be living in a garret on no dollars a week instead of running a great contracting and transportation business, which is doing pretty well, thank you, but honest now. The notion takes me sometimes to yell poetry of the red-hot, hail-glorious land kind when I think of New York City as a state by itself. End of chapter 16